Okay, hi everybody. Um, I have a banjo bridge here, and I want to show you guys how to uh, flatten the feet out and get your distance off on the banjo. Mm -hmm. So, we've got a banjo bridge right here, and I have taken and measured it with a set of calipers. Okay? And then what you want to do is you want to take a plane and you hold the plane in your hand. I'm going to try and do this. I don't have a tripod set up, but I'm going to see if I can pull this off. All right. Um, let's see here if I can. All right. You take your plane in your hand and then you take your, you hold the banjo bridge and you go across the plane. Now, I am not doing this because I've already planed her down. <coughs> I'm just showing you. You hold the plane in your hand. You hold the banjo bridge in your hand. And you just right off. There she goes. And this is how you get the height after you've cut your, your notches in. This is how you get your height correct. So when you take the feeler gauges and you measure them with the bridge in at the first fret and the twelfth fret so what I'm talking about is you take a set of feeler gauges with the bridge in and you measure at the first fret and you measure at the twelfth fret and if you need to drop down say ten thousandths twenty thousandths if you need to drop down ten thousandths on your string height you cut twenty thousandths off your bridge and then that will give you your ten thousandths string height because the string height is fifty percent between the nut the twelfth fret and then the twelfth fret and where the bridge sits and that's the easiest way to cut down a bridge whether it's a a violin bridge now keep in mind once you cut the height of a violin bridge you have to leave enough meat to put sandpaper on the belly of a violin viola cello or bass and sand those to fit the belly and so you get your general height with uh, of the feet and then you sand them in and then you take most of the bridge height off of the top of the bridge. On a banjo you run it straight across because the banjo is straight so you set your one-third depth of the string into the top of the banjo bridge and then you shave the feet to match. Alright the book says to uh, go about 35 thousandths at the first fret. That's where the book says to go. I took it down to about 32 and now I have a, a nut that needs to be polished. So let me show you that. All right, uh, let's get some light on the subject. You can see this is a brand new ebony nut. Uh, she's got a little chip in her, but uh, she'll be fine. That's when we were filing her. And what I'm gonna do is polish up that nut a little bit. Now you want your string height on the nut one third of the distance of the string. Now, that is by what the books say. All the builder's books say to go one-third depth on the nut of the distance of the thickness of the string. So, you know, there's, there's a little chip in that, but that'll be fine. It's not going to affect anything. I'm going to smooth that out as I polish this nut. So the bridge, oh, there she is next to Sam's paw. Uh, the bridge is fine. It's ready to go. It's cut to size and then I need to polish that nut a little bit and this is a an old K banjo. It's uh, It has the music stand K as you can see there. It looks like a music stand So I would estimate this is somewhere in the 40s maybe a little later, but not by much so Okay, you can see here on this nut that that chip is gone. There was a big chip right here. Right there, there was a big chip. And you can see that that chip is gone. It's just a touch of a file a little bit. That's why I taped off the fingerboard. And now I'm going to polish her out. Okay, 
this is the finished nut and it's been polished with our our brown proprietary brown wax we call it hockey dung <laughs> donkey dung, <laughs> donkey dung. Uh, I call it hockey dung I don't know what I call it I call it hockey dung, but um, it really makes the ebony stand out. Now I taped it off uh, to keep from making any marks on the fingerboard or the back of the head or the top of the headstock. She's been all polished out with 2,000 grit pa down to 2,000 grit paper, and all it needs now is graphite put in the slots right there, and she's ready to tune up and play. So that is a replacement stock ebony nut made for a K banjo. Somewhere, I would say 40s because of this insignia right here. Let me pull this tape off. It is the music stand K, even though it's upside down. Let me pull it around so you can see it right side up. And it's the music well, stand. Well, you just twisted our brains up. Yeah, I just twisted the banjo around. I'm, I don't have my tripod here, so this has the big white cross K on it, which I believe is from the 40s. I'm not positive. Please correct me. And then it has the K music stand. Okay, here you go. One K banjo. Mr. Peek, if you know what this banjo is, please let me know. I know it's a K, but it's got a brand new nut. Hand carved. And we got a brand new bridge out of David Hanser. New tailpiece out of David Hanser. Other than that, the banjo came as it was. We tuned the head to an A. And she's beautiful. And she's done. Many blessings.